Govigama monopoly of presidents and prime ministers in Sri Lanka. From Sri Lankan journalist DBS Jiraj and other Sri Lankan sources. Compare and contrast. Whenever presidential polls are held in India, we have a tendency to compare and contrast it with the situation in Sri Lanka. Like India, Sri Lanka too has a multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multi-caste society. Sinhalese comprise 75% while Tamils, Muslims, Burgers, Malays and other ethnic groups comprise the rest. Religion-wise Buddhists who are predominantly Sinhala form 70% of the population. Hindus, Muslims, and Christians are the other major religious groups. The percentages in terms of caste are difficult to gauge. According to some estimates the Govigama comprise about 55% to 60% of the Sinhalese while Velalar are about 50% to 55% of the Sri Lankan Tamils. It could be surmised therefore that the Govigamas as well as the Velalar are the numerically large castes within the Sinhala and Sri Lankan Tamil people. While most caste groups have political representation at different levels and different degrees, it is the Govigama and Velalar castes that dominate the politics of the Sinhala and Tamil people respectively. We know it is distasteful to discuss caste in public but in Sri Lanka as in India, the caste factor cannot be ignored as far as politics, the Buddhist Nikayas and arranged marriages are concerned. The caste factor came to the fore in political discussions in India when two Dalit candidates competed for the presidency. Indian analysts delve into this topic without inhibitions. One cannot analyze electoral politics in India without taking caste aspects into account. Likewise the element of caste cannot be ignored in Sinhala or Tamil politics in Sri Lanka. So let us look at this issue more honestly and less hypocritically. As stated earlier the numerically dominant caste among the Sinhalese are the Govigamas. Their counterparts among the Tamils are the Velalar. Since independence from the British in 1948 all prime ministers and presidents in Sri Lanka with one solitary exception have been from the majority Sinhala race, majority Buddhist religion and majority Govigama caste. The only exception, some say aberration, was Rana Zinghi Primadasa who was a Sinhala Buddhist but not from the dominant Govigama caste. The first Sri Lankan governor, general in 1954 was Sir Oliver Gunatil like a Sinhala Govigama Protestant Christian. In 1962 Sir Oliver was replaced by a Kandian Raidala William Gopal Lawa as governor general. Governor General Gopal Lawa transformed into President Gopal Lawa in 1972 after the Republican constitution was promulgated. In 1978 came J.R. J. Wardeen's executive presidency. Thereafter the Prime Minister post became relatively powerless. Even then it has been a Sinhala, Buddhist, Govigama preserve with the exception of Primadasa who shattered the glass ceilings of both the Premiership and Presidency in 1978 and 1988 respectively. C.P. Da Silva was the only non- Govigama caste member who could have become Prime Minister in 1960 as leader of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. He was thwarted by the Governor, General Sir Oliver Gunatillik who was to later express his misgivings about a PM from the Salagama caste to political leaders such as Tamil Christian Velalar S. J. V. Chilvanayagam and Dr. N. M. Pereira. C. P. Da Silva was an old Tomian and ex, civil servant with a proven track record as administrator. He also had the numbers in Parliament to form a majority government. Yet Sir Oliver opted to dissolve Parliament instead of appointing the Minaria Deo as PM. Later on C.P. De Silva's party opted for Sirai Maratwat Bandaranak from Balangoda to Charles Percival De Silva from Balapiti Yat as SLFP leader. C.P. De Silva stepped down voluntarily. However in 1964 C.P. De Silva defected to the opposition with a group of 14 MPs. At least six of the defectors were from the Salagama caste. The 2010 presidential poll saw former Army Commander Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca challenging incumbent President Mahinda Rajapaksa. The Ambalango Dalayan was of non Govigama stock, whereas Mahinda Rajapaksha was of Govigama lineage. Mahinda Rajapaksha won, and it was rumored then that the caste factor had played a part in influencing the rural hinterland while voting. Interestingly enough the caste factor played an important role when the then Sri Lanka tasted limited franchise under the British. 
there was an election for what was termed as the educated Sri Lankan member seat in the Legislative Council. There were also elections for the constituencies of rural European, urban European, and Berger. The educated Sri Lankan seat evoked great interest. There was no universal franchise then and voting eligibility was on the basis of educational and property qualifications. Still the poll in 1911 was the first time Sri Lankans got the chance to vote. Two candidates won a Sinhalese and the other a Tamil entered the fray. The two candidates was Dr. Marcus Fernando and Serpon Nambalam Ramanathan. Dr. Marcus Fernando was a Sinhala fisherman Kerala while Sir Panabalam Ramanathan was a Tamil Velalar. There were tensions between the Govigama and Kara elites then. Influential sections of the Govigama elite opted to support the Tamil Ramanathan against their fellow Sinhalese Dr. Marcus Fernando. After all the Govigamas and Velalar were cast counterparts. Sir Panabalam Ramanathan defeated Dr. Marcus Fernando easily. The phenomenon of many Sinhalese supporting a Tamil over another Sinhalese is often referred to as the golden phase of Sinhala, Tamil unity. Actually it was the golden phase of Govigamavelala caste unity. D.S. Senanayak to Ranil Wickramising he. As representative democracy developed in the island with the concepts of universal franchise and territorial representation being introduced the numerically larger Govigama and Velalar castes began dominating Sinhala and Tamil politics respectively. Since the Sinhala people were the majority community political power passed into their hands. Post, independence politics at one level has seen the Tamils struggling overtly to gain an adequate scheme of power sharing. On another level the non- Govigama castes have been struggling covertly to challenge Govigama hegemony in politics. Every Prime Minister of Sri Lanka from D.S. Senanayak to Ranil Wickramising he and Mahinda Rajapaksh, except Primadasa, have been from the Govigama caste. Every President from William Gopalawa to Maithrapala Siri Sena and Gaudabaya Rajapaksa, except Primadasa, have been from the Govigama caste. The only non- Govigama to be premier and president was Ranazing he Primadasa but he was a Sinhala Buddhist. Primadasa however was not from the Kara, Salagama Dura, Bathgam, Wahampara, or Nawanten caste blocks. He was from a numerically insignificant caste regarded as very low in the caste hierarchy. It is to Primadasa's credit that he surmounted caste and class obstacles to reach the pinnacle of political power. This is why many see Primadasa's success as an exception or aberration in Sri Lankan politics. Yet he was always at the receiving end of caste-based wisecracks. A case in point being the joke circulating in 1981 about Primadasa attending the British royal wedding of Charles and Diana. The only non-Buddhist to hold a post on PAR with the presidency or premiership was Sir Oliver Gunatilika. He was the governor, General from 1954 to 1962. Sir Oliver Gunatilik who served as Governor, General for eight years was an Anglican Christian but he was a Govigama. He became Governor, General before the 1956 revolution. It is doubtful whether a similar feat could be repeated nowadays. Besides Sir Oliver was a caste-conscious Govigama. His attitude towards C.P. Da Silva illustrates. Two others who were born Chiristians and baptized in Anglican churches became prime ministers. One went on to become president. Both however had embraced the Buddhist faith before moving up the political ladder. One was SWRD Bandaranak while the other was J.R.J. Wardana. Both were Govigama. So powerful is the caste factor in Sinhala politics that even the progressively enlightened Chandrika Bandaranak Kumaradun Gatu had to accommodate it. Chandrika who broke barriers of religion caste and class in personal life by marrying Vijayakumaradun Ga could not break such barriers in political life. When the time came to replace her mother Siraima Bandaranak as prime minister there were many suitable non-Govigama aspirants like Nimal Siripala da Silva, G. L. Piris and Mangala Samaradura. Yet she chose the lackluster Ratnazuri Wikramanayaki of the Govigama caste as premier. If this was the plight of persons who are Sinhala and Buddhist but not Govakula, then what chances do the ethnic and religious minority community members have in Sri Lanka at this point of time? None whatsoever. The only non, 
Sinhala, non, Buddhist but Tamil Christian Vel Alar who could have aspired to the Prime Minister post under an executive presidency was former Foreign Minister Lakshman Kathar Kamar. However Lakshman Kathar Kamar learned a bitter lesson when Chandrika Kumaradunga wanted to make him Prime Minister. Mahinda Rajapaksa sabotaged the move to become Premier in 2004. But it was possible that Rajapaksa may have made Lakshman Kathar Kamar Premier for cosmetic purposes at least after attaining the executive presidency in November 2005. Speculation on that count however is irrelevant as the Sri Lankan Tamil Tigers killed Lakshman Kathar Kamar in August 2005 before the presidential elections itself.